Greetings, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is MedPIC's Case of the Week, number 666. We would like to acknowledge the case contributors from the Oregon Health and Science University, Kristen Kinsman, Jeffrey Pollock, and Ryan Berecki. We have no disclosures. This week's patient is a 21-year-old man who presented with several months of progressive apraxia, sialuria, and hesitant gait. He has a previous history of Asperger's and bipolar affective disorder. On physical exam, he had a hypophonic voice. He had dysmetria, a gait disturbance with short shuffling steps. He had these abnormal MR images on T2 and GRE. We can also see here abnormalities involving the thalamus and the lateral portion of the lenticular nuclei, the putamen. He also had diffusion abnormalities involving the cortex and involving the thalami bilaterally. So in summary, this patient had abnormal diffusion and abnormal T2 and flare hyperintensity, patterns involving bilateral thalami, the midbrain and pons, bilateral putamina, in a symmetric pattern with no mass effect whatsoever. What is your differential diagnosis? Symmetric lesions of the basal ganglia and thalamus always suggest a systemic insult, which may be ischemic, toxic, or metabolic, either genetic or acquired. The differential diagnostic list in this patient is long, but includes Wilson's disease, Lay's disease, carbon monoxide intoxication, and pecan or haloverdin spots disease. We want to add some very important lab values. Ceruloplasmin was low, serum copper was low, and the 24-hour urine copper was high. Obviously, someone was thinking about an error of copper metabolism or Wilson's disease. The diagnosis in this case is hepatolenticular degeneration or Wilson's disease, which was confirmed by a liver biopsy showing very high copper levels. Wilson's disease is also known for having what is called the giant panda sign seen in the midbrain on axial T2 weighted images. This is formed by the normal low signal intensity of the white matter of the cerebral peduncles, the normal low signal intensity of the red nucleus, and abnormal hyperintensity involving the remainder of the brainstem. So the brainstem is abnormally hyperintense on the T2 weighted images. We sometimes talk about the small panda sign involving the pontine tegmentum. And once again, we have a pattern here of abnormal hyperintensity involving the brainstem in the region around the cerebral aqueduct. The patient also had abnormalities involving the thalamus and the lateral lenticular nuclei, or the putamina, bilaterally. So what is Wilson's disease? Well, Wilson, in 1912, reported seven patients with a primary familial neurologic disorder associated with cirrhosis. Fleischer, also in the same year, reported abnormal corneal pigment and neuropsychiatric symptoms associated with cirrhosis. Cummings identified elevated copper in the brain and the liver. Shearing and Gitlin demonstrated decreased serum ceruloplasmin. Byrne reported this disease to be autosomal recessive. Friedman established the gene as being on chromosome 13, and in 1993, the Wilson's disease gene was shown to encode for a copper transporting enzyme, ATPase 7b. The prevalence of this autosomal recessive disorder is approximately 1 in 30,000, but about 1 in 90 people are asymptomatic carriers of the heterozygous state. Wilson's disease is related to abnormal copper metabolism. Normal stores of copper are around 100 milligrams throughout the body. Dietary copper comes primarily from shellfish, liver, mushroom, soy, gelatin, and chocolate, and normally exceeds the daily requirements. Normal homeostasis is a balance between gastrointestinal absorption and gastrointestinal excretion into bile, which is formed by the hepatocytes. The hepatocytes regulate the copper with transporting ATPase ATP7B. Normal copper is incorporated into ceruloplasmin. Elevated copper is transported 
by ATP7B from the Golgi apparatus to biliary canalicular membrane where it is excreted into the bile. This is an inborn error of metabolism, but it usually has a delayed manifestation due to the gradual accumulation of copper and a toxicity which is slowly progressive. The initial presentation in many patients is hepatic in about 80% of patients presenting in the first decade. However, the majority of patients who present over the age of 20 have a neurological dysfunction. Hematologic, psychiatric, and renal dysfunction can also cause clinical presentation. The overall findings include cirrhosis in up to 70% of patients, and Kaiser Fleischer rings have been reported in virtually all patients who have neurologic disease and up to 70% of patients who have hepatic disease. The neurologic presentation is variable and includes dysarthria and dystonia, which may involve the tongue causing drooling, which is present in our patient. Whispering dysphonia was also present in our patient. They may have tremor, dysdiadokinesia, and chorea ticks and myoclonus are unusual. The psychiatric presentation is very variable. The diagnostic criteria, Sternleb criteria, require two items from this list. Kaiser Fleischer rings, typical neurologic symptoms, a low serum ceruloplasmin, elevated urinary copper, and high hepatic copper. Four of these were present in this patient. The treatment of hepatolenticular degeneration or Wilson's disease begins with reducing dietary copper. Patients can be given a zinc supplement which will block copper absorption from the intestine. Chelating agents are now a second line of treatment with D-penicillamine or trientine which increase urinary excretion and if there is severe cirrhosis, liver transplantation. The transplanted liver should have a normal ATP7B and therefore normal metabolism and biliary excretion of copper. New treatments might also involve gene therapy to replace the defective gene within the hepatocytes. The MR findings that are exclusive to Wilson's disease, including the tectal plate hyperintensity, the CPM-like abnormalities in the central pons, concurrent signal changes in the basal ganglia, brainstem, and thalamus, the face of the giant panda sign is only seen in about one out of seven patients who has Wilson's disease. So the hyperintensities in the tectal plate and pons and the simultaneous involvement of the basal ganglia, thalamus, and the brainstem have been described as virtually pathognomonic of Wilson's disease. These features were seen in this index case. So this has been MedPix Case of the Week number 666. Again, you can earn CME credit by visiting our website and I want to thank you for your kind attention.